Okay. Welcome to The Story Next Door, Stay at Home in Wilton's podcast, bringing two generations together in one conversation. For our third podcast today, we have Sally Maraventano Kersmer, president of Stay at Home in Wilton, and con familiar face here at our podcast, um, and is currently a junior. Normally, we'd all be together in one room and sharing a microphone, but you know, this is the new normal. And staying at home has a whole new meaning now these days. Sally, do you want to take it? So, yeah, um, we at Stay at Home, uh, of course, feel that it's our, our mission to keep our people connected. And um, we have done it in so many resourceful ways when times were normal. But this is a whole new ball game now. And um, lots of our members are, you know, alone in their rooms if they're just at, uh, if they're living at an assisted living, or if they're um, in their own homes, they don't go out as most of us don't go out either. And so, stay at home has a whole new meaning. I said to my husband on the second night that we were sort of feeling the quarantine here, or whatever you want to call it. Um, aren't we lucky to have a home that we love and that we don't mind staying in? Uh, walking around with the grounds outside, you know, our stay at home existence in Wilton is a lot different than other places. How do you see it, Connor? Yeah, I would I would definitely agree that it, we're lucky to be in a community uh, where we're privileged enough to have a safe, comforting place to stay at home, whereas other places all across the world that are affected by this uh, pandemic might not have the same resources or uh, luck to be in such a position that we are. So. I think we should definitely uh, all appreciate the situation that we're in for better or worse. But yeah, so, you know, uh, for me staying at home, um, it's definitely a, a pretty big drastic adjustment in my life. You know, being in high school, I've always been out and about uh, from running from activity to activity, but it's pretty crazy now that everything is just completely uh, within my house or on my computer. So it's definitely a big adjustment. So st staying with us in our home is with my daughter, Fran, who uh, lives in Manhattan, very close to Lincoln Center. She's a producer, a Broadway producer, and uh, works for the Martha Graham Dance Company. Her daughter, Pia, who's one year younger than you, Connor, um, dances with Alvin Ailey five times a week. Um, now, all of that has stopped, you know, and she had to bring all her gear with her uh, so that she could do the courses online, which she is really enjoying and has been doing already for two weeks. But it's such a difference for them to be here than to be in New York City, you can imagine. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, I, I noticed from the little notes that um, Lisa gave me, Connor, that you moved to Wilton when you were quite young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've essentially spent my entire life here. Okay, so that's that's true of our children too, pretty much. Of course, they're they're much older than you are, but um, they went all through the Wilton schools. We we came in 1978 when my husband um, began his practice as a cardiology at Norwalk Hospital, and um, you know we we were a community even then. I mean, immediately we were taken in and uh, you know became part of everything. Um, and so when he gave up his night call and his weekend call after practicing for 45 years, we went to a library volunteer um, coffee and I looked at all the tables and saw this sign that said, stay at home in Wilton. And we thought, wow, that's something we'd really like to work for. You know, that's a great organization. Uh, because uh, neither one of us have family in the area. You know, I'm from a big Italian family from the Bronx and then Long Island. And I was used to my grandparents being just so close. I saw them every day. So th this was a whole new lifestyle for us. How have you liked the country atmosphere of growing up, Connor? Does it suit you? Uh, yeah, I think so. Just the kind of the small town, uh, relatively small town, but the peaceful tranquil, connected environment definitely is uh, very conducive to growing up and feeling supported and, and happy. Like ever That's since I was young, I've always enjoyed all of the town events and the uh, the camaraderie that you can really just feel uh, that I think is, uh, is very important to being happy when you're growing up. Um, so I, once again, 
not to just praise Wilton, but I'm I'm very fortunate to be here and to have spent time here. Well, I'm so glad you feel that way. That's that's really beautiful. And I'll tell you one really neat thing about being a member of Stay at Home in Wilton. Um, Ralph and I joined, and before we knew what happened to us, we were both on the board. Um, and uh, we began to go to all the big social activities because our members really like parties, and we do as many as we can, along with seminars and educational things and lunches and breakfast out and all of that. Uh, but um, I, we walked into a party at Ambler Farm, and I'm not sure if you were at that one, Connor, uh, but uh, there were young people from the key club there, and uh, someone called out my name immediately, Sally Kermzer, and I turned around, and it was a couple who had two sons that went to school with Joseph, my oldest boy, and I don't think we had seen each other in 25 years. And it gave me a whole new feeling about Wilton. It was like, wow, now we've been here so long, but we're making new old friends. I thought it was really neat. Yeah, that's funny. Yes, I mean, I've encountered people uh, at various places who I recognize from the town who I wouldn't otherwise know, say at like an airport. Like I've seen them around yeah. town and wouldn't. Yeah. And then you make that connection. It's, it's very interesting. Someone that I would just be like, sort of acquainted with in the town if you <laughs> yeah. can, you realize that you can really make a quick new connection pretty easily with anyone here and doesn't it amaze you with the size of wilton i mean i think when we moved it was about fourteen thousand people and now it's between 17 and 18 i think um mm -hmm. but doesn't it amaze you when you're out and about when you've traveled or you're away at school and you mentioned that you're from wilton that so many people know it i yeah. can't believe that yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting. So, Connor, how has living in Wilton colored your feeling about where you might want to go to college? Hmm, that's a very interesting question. Um, I definitely enjoy the town environment uh, as opposed to a city, just because it's what I'm accustomed to. So right okay. now, I would pretty much, I wouldn't want to be too far from home, and I wouldn't want to be in too, uh, too big of a location. Like I really, I really like the fact about the town that I know. It feels like if I walk down the street, I'm going to know about half of the people that I see and not know the other half. So it's still yeah, that's to good to know other people, but also feel familiar and connected. So yeah, medium ish. Are you looking at big schools or smaller ones or? Yeah, so, your... so mostly kind of like medium in that uh, not too small because I want to still have the chance to expand my who I interact with and like you know, experience like a full community feel rather than like a, a clustered group of, you know, a, a couple hundred students. But I wouldn't want to go too big and feel like I'm, I'm losing that connection with the people that I know. So definitely well, that, in the medium range, not too small, not too big. Kind of the same predicament that Wilton is. So um, Lisa told me that one of the places you looked at was Dartmouth. And um, my husband, Ralph, uh, graduated from Dartmouth undergrad. And um, that was always a fabulous place to go up and, and visit. Very tranquil, but very bustling. Uh, and I, I know that you're a musician and you play several instruments and he plays the oboe. And when he was at Dartmouth, he used to hitchhike every weekend to Middlebury College to play with the Vermont Symphony. So huh. those memories for him are stupendous. And um, you know that was an added bonus for him really. Yeah, no, w wherever I go to college, somewhere, it, I'm thinking somewhere in New England, but wherever, I'll be, I'll just be happy to get to continue the activities that I enjoy and make new friends and, and such. That's so, great. I'm looking forward to the next few years. So, Connor, give us a, a little bit of an idea about um, your perception of stay at home in Wilton as an organization and a volunteer nonprofit organization. Um, do you feel that? We definitely serve the community. Oh, certainly, yeah. I think it's uh, it's very important for groups like this to to be involved in the community because it, it definitely helps give some sort of structure to bring people together who might otherwise not be connected and gives uh, people reason to, uh, to interact with one another and stay connected and find new friendships and, and such. You know, it's certainly very helpful and beneficial for 
uh, social camaraderie and making everyone feel like they're part of something. And you know, it's especially important when people are older because the feeling of isolation is one of the toughest things that they have to deal with. And um, I, I'm proud to say that our board members and uh, our volunteer members really go out of their way to make our members feel that they'll never be alone. For instance, mm -hmm. when we have our parties and even some of the concerts and seminars, Nobody ever misses an event because they no longer drive. We have volunteers that are so fabulous that they take them there, they take them home again, take them to doctors, take them shopping. I mean, they form a true relationship with the members. And I always, I think that's really fabulous. Yeah, I, I've definitely observed that, that everyone really feels like they're, they're getting involved and it's a good way to, to counteract that sort of isolation that might occur, which is so, definitely, sorry, okay. sorry. No, no, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that now it kind of takes on a whole different meaning of isolation with quarantine. Oh. So it's, it's definitely important for uh, for the organization like this to help keep people involved, uh, whereas they might uh, not feel as connected during such a time. Yeah, you know, Connor, we've never experienced anything in our lifetime like this. So yeah. it's really... Um, we're all on, you know, the test circuit, whether you live in Italy or you live in uh, uh, the UK or here. I mean, everybody is talking about it. Your life, our lives have changed, you know, dramatically. And more and more, we know how much we, you know, we need each other. Um, these nurses and doctors, I mean, you know, my husband um, is seeing patients, you know, and uh, some of the, the um Visits are, are virtual, you know, but he, come, he comes home frustrated because he says, how can you, you know, listen to someone's heart or take their blood pressure, uh, you know, by looking at them on a screen. So it's, it's very frustrating. And I'm in awe of the uh, medical community that gets right down there in the midst of it all, in spite of the danger and continues to minister to these people. Yeah, definitely. It's very, it's very admirable. So what are some ways that you think that seniors throughout the town might be able to stay connected during this time? Well, um, I think that I, I'm pretty sure that like any other groups, there are clusters of people who consider themselves really good friends and I'm sure they're calling each other. I think statistics have shown in this time now that the phone is being used more than any other device for the first time in a long time. Um, the other day, I thought of five people that I'm very close to, but I don't see much. And within a day, all five of them called me. So I'm a little bit like a psychic, but um, <laughs> it's, you know, it, it's amazing how you reach out when you're experiencing that little bit of isolation or loneliness. We have tried at Stay at Home <clears throat> to... Um, uh, to notify people in print with emails once a week of uh, all the things that are available for them in case they're having trouble getting food or meds or um, any any of their needs. And it's interesting that we've had people volunteer at Stay at Home who are not regular volunteers. They just say, you know, we have some time now because our business is closed. What can we do to help? And I think that means a lot to the members, really a lot. And then we divided up our board um, into about 10 or 11 people each, and we call each and every member every week to see how wow. they're doing. Yeah, see how they're doing. In fact, a couple of people have said to me, Sally, are you checking up on me? And I said, well, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. But um, I, I think people are really thrilled that we're doing that. And, uh, you know, I was going to ask you, has the high school or the school system done anything to help the students stay connected during this time? Um, yeah, a few things. So we're, we're, for school, we're having a lot of video chats for classes and they can't make them mandatory because people might have to care for a sibling or yeah. uh, other household duties, or they might not have a computer. But they ha we have scheduled optional video chats with the whole class that uh, that definitely allow for people to, to continue to interact with one another if they have the time or if they need to. 
so that's what the school it's specifically is doing. But of course, just like as you said with seniors, lots of people feel close to each other and are friends, and they'd be calling yeah. each other anyways without without the schools. Uh, uh, well, and I, I think when you get to be older, there's that, um, you know, the fact that we've all lived in the same community for so many years. I think we've lived here uh, for 44 years. And um, so we know how to connect with each other because a lot of us, even if you're not, you know, best friends, but acquaintances, you think about people in times like this and, and you think, wow, I wonder if they need something, you know? Um, mm -hmm. We have neighbors who live alone in these big houses here, and I'm sure that's true in New Canaan as well. Um, and just because they have the means doesn't mean that they have the connection to people, and I think you really need that. Um, I mean, when you're older, you need it all the time, but in a crisis, you really need it. Yeah, that's where organizations and like community outreach and just checking up on people and maintaining contact is is really essential because there's also so much fear and uncertainty oh, yeah. that even without the isolation it'd be it'd be pretty scary if we were all together so when yeah kind of i think that yeah fear is there. big fear and anxiety it's i think we all have it right now and it's nothing to be ashamed about it's a good thing to talk about, you know, either with your parents or your siblings or um, certainly uh, your friends. I think, you know, the fact that Pia can't see any of her friends for this long period of time, you know, they're in New York City. Um, I I'm sure that it's having an effect on her. You know, she's an only child. And so, um, you know, I can just see it in my, in my own family. Connor, yeah. what have you enjoyed doing the most in terms of extracurriculars? And I know you're in the key club. What are the things you especially look forward to doing? Once quarantine's done? Yeah. Uh, I really enjoy giving piano lessons. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Yeah, I give, I give piano lessons to kids around the town. Oh, wow. Which I had to delay. I've moved some of them to FaceTime, but some of them, you know, technological difficulties. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting back into that. Wow, that's terrific. And where do you give them, Connor? Uh, I drive around to their houses. Wow. Do you think you might ever want to teach music? Um, hmm. Professionally, probably not. But I definitely enjoy uh, enjoy this because I've, I've been playing piano for quite a long time. So it's easy, it's nice and easy and enjoyable to get to teach kids beginner intermediate lessons. That's really terrific. Um, you know, recently my husband and I attended a concert in Southport by a Korean pianist, um, Kyung Ho Chu, who lives in Wilton mm -hmm. and she's magnificent. And uh, I was really um, blown away by a few people who were in their 60s and 70s and taking piano lessons now from her. I thought that was so cool. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So is piano the first instrument that you love or is there another another one? Uh, I also play viola in the school's orchestra, but piano is pretty much my main instrument. It probably relaxes you, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's also very uh, a nice process to always get to learn new things. You know, that's great. It's, it's just a, a fun hobby slash uh, big interest. <laughs> so so I, I do have one question for you. Um, a number of people are trying to figure out ways that we could connect seniors with, um, you know, high school students or younger. Um, and uh, some have suggested, um, you know, a surrogate grandparent uh, for those kids who don't have their grandparents in the area. Uh, you know, you obviously did grow up with your grandparents here, but um, do you think that kids would enjoy that or would they be shy about it with, you know, people that they didn't know at first? Um, I think it definitely depends on the kid. I think some people would probably be a little uh, shy with that, as you said, but I think definitely some people could benefit from having like a, an older guidance and it might take some warming up too, but I think that's a good idea. You know, when my kids were little, my mom used to come and uh, go into the kindergarten and make gingerbread houses, you know, at Miller School at Christmas time. And um, 
uh, there was a whole group of uh, grandparent age people who would go and read stories to the kids. So, I mean, that, that kind of stuff has been going on, you know, but hmm. not. Yeah. yeah, I think that kind of stuff's helpful. Yeah, I think, I think it's great. I mean, my grandparents were so important to me that um, I just look back with happy memories every single day. Um, so any questions you have for us about anything? Um, yeah, what kind of, uh, I think a good use of time during this whole, uh, this whole event is definitely TV slash movies. So would you have any uh, movie recommendations or TV shows or any sort of entertainment? Well, we just uh, watched and completed the English game. Have you heard about it? I haven't, no. Okay, it just came out on March 30th. It's Netflix, and it's about uh, two soccer teams in England. One team is clearly privileged, you know, owners of businesses and things like mm -hmm. that. And this is going back into the late 1800s early 1900s and the other team being factory workers and um they actually you know interact and play against each other not happily in the beginning but some of the uh factory workers are such outstanding players that they are kind of stolen away by the other team and it, there's a lot of humanity in this movie, a lot of people with problems, a lot of talent on the soccer field. And it's interesting to see how the competition developed and what happens. I think you'd really like that. It's called The English Game. Sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. I'll definitely look into that. Yeah. Take a look at that. Cool. Um, of course, I was going to say, Connor, you might not know this, but I've owned a cooking school in Wilton for 38 years, mm -hmm. right in my home, right in my beautiful kitchen. Wow. Yeah. And um, I think cooking is a great thing to do when you have a lot of time. And I hear from people that they're getting out there cooking magazines, and some of them even took my book out and are cooking from it. And I think it's, um, you know, when you can look forward to sitting down to dinner after a day of being maybe a little frustrated, it's it's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. I've, uh, my family's made, been stepping up our baking quite a bit. Terrific, like, that's beans, great. Cupcakes, you know, everything. Uh, what, are your, what are your favorite things? Are you a dessert guy or do you like the main course meals? I'd say I'm probably more of a savory food guy. Yeah, me too. Slightly, slightly. Me too. My daughter would rather bake. My granddaughter would rather bake. But I enjoy putting that whole meal on the table. And uh, Franny, my daughter, has been taking pictures every night. You know, you would think that it's a big celebration. But, you know, it is a celebration. We're alive. We're healthy. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. um, and, yeah, and um, it makes that dinner even more special. Yeah, so I, w I would agree. Baking, cooking, awesome pastime to get get through the day and look, have something, <laughs> have something good to look forward to that's great and you have siblings don't you yeah i have two sisters and how are they how are they managing through all this uh they're younger than me somewhat bored you know miss their friends yeah. they're getting through yeah. it. well that's good um so of all the things you do at the high school what, what do you, I know the piano, mentoring the piano students, but um, do you look forward to participating in the events that you've, uh, this is an unfair question, okay, Connor, yeah. but do you enjoy the times you've spent with us at Stay at Home, and are there other things you do for the Key Club that you also enjoy? <laughs> yeah, no, I've, of course I've enjoyed it. I've, uh, I've also done a lot of volunteering with Kiwanis. Oh, good. Through the town, so uh the uh citrus sale and the food drive oh, yeah. um, and that kind of stuff i wouldn't yeah pretty much equal uh time spent between the two organizations and i've just really enjoyed both of them it's a good way to uh get involved and make sure that the community is doing okay you know that's so nice of you it's so nice of you to do that um i just lost my neighbor two days ago and we were really good buddies and uh I, I often cooked for her, you know, and she would send us the fruit from the Kiwanis sale every single year. And boy, did we look forward to it, mm -hmm. yeah. especially in the dead of winter. Yeah, it, the, the citrus sale is very popular and, and good. Oh, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I think that you're going to have a wonderful experience in, in college, Connor, because you've already um, given yourself to a lot of organizations and you've uh, also managed to hone some very good uh, talents that you have, your music, and that's just going to get better and better. Uh, my husband is not a professional musician, but he practices the oboe an hour and a half every day. And so I think that um, when you love music, that's going to grow with you, I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank thank. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> thank you so much. And right. thank, thank you for all you do for us, Connor. It's greatly appreciated. Great. Thank you so much, you two. I think this was great. Um, we're going to post this on our website and hopefully get this out in the town. And uh, hopefully the next time we all meet, it's face to face, person to person at one of our fun events. But in the meantime, stay home, stay safe and uh, reach out to those that you might think need a, a helping call or just a a friendly voice over the phone. All right. Absolutely. Thank you, Lisa. Thank Bye. you, Connor. Thank you. Thanks, Connor.